What am I thinking folks? This is torture. It's absolutely roasting. I left work or the house at uh, just before two usual sticky Edinburgh bypass traffic. Eventually got around the bypass. Clear run up to Stirling and I'm in Glen Lyon now. It's half five and I'm making my way up some Corbett's at the end of the Glen. <sighs> Sorry folks. <laughs> the plan is to get a high camp on one of those Corbett's. That's if I don't die of heat exhaustion. Okay, this could be a worry. That stream is on the map. This is dry as an Arab sandal. Oh, I've no water. Worst case scenario, I'll need to go down to the the shore there and get some water, but that's not ideal. Yeah, okay, probably overkill, but I'm taking no chances. About three and a half litres there. <laughs> I'm quite happy to put this on the record that the Corbett's are more difficult than the Munro's. Now hear me out, I know what you're saying, there's 282 Munro's, there's 222 Corbett's. The Munro's are typically higher obviously, because the Munro's are anything over 3,000 feet, Corbett's anything below 3,000 down to 2,500 feet. So undoubtedly the Munro's are always going to be more difficult in winter, but hear me out, hear me out. The Munro's, there's lots of pairs, treblers, quadruplers, you can do seven in Glen Shiel, you can do nine in Glen She. quite easily, the drop's minimal in a lot of the cases. But for a Corbett to qualify as a Corbett, as well as the height criteria, it also needs 500 feet round all sides to be a Corbett as well. So that gives a prominence in today's money of 152 metres around all the sides. There's no criteria like that on the Munro's. So that's why you get more Munro's in chains of ridges. So what you tend to find is the Corbett's, they're more isolated. They come in singletons and pairs. And there is some places where you can get maybe five near Bridge Orkey, which I've done. You've got Cunyag up in the northwest, it's got three on the ridge, but that's really rare. So it typically does take longer to do a round of Corbett's than it does a round of Munro's. So there's obviously more travel and more trips to get through your Corbett's. And lastly, a lot of the Corbett's are pathless. They're not popular enough. So it's grassy, boggy, heather, bog, did I say bog? <laughs> uh, peat hags, steep terrain, where the Munro's have all got pretty eroded paths and they're easy to follow. I'm not saying don't take a map obviously, but that's my insight into the whole Corbett versus Munro things. This big lump here is my first Corbett and probably my summit camp tonight. Typically, I've got a little drop here before the final rise up to there. Summit is on the left there. <sighs> Through the gap here, this there. That's tomorrow's Corbett. I was tempted to make a go of it tonight, but Absolutely no chance, it's uh, too far away. I have got just under three hours of daylight right enough, but just with the heat, nah. I'll, I'll camp up there tonight, definitely. Do that Corbett tomorrow. Right, yo, I'm now up on the plateau. It's about just over a kilometre's walk 
along the plow and a little pull up to the summit. Right yo folks, this is Mia V, 906 metres high and it's my 139th Corbett. So, now to find a pitch. This is the summit as you can see, it is rather stony and bouldery. There's odd little bit you could fit, fit a tent in here and there. Right, my plan is, is to head over to this minor top here because I'm hoping that is going to have some uninterrupted views right across Rannoch Moor. You can just make out Ben Nevis there, that high one. You've got Bukalitev Moor here, as you can see into Glencoe. I know it's hazy but you'll get my, you'll get my drift. So uh, yeah, let's head out over there and see what it's like. Folks, that's the uh, Lanshan 1 Pro pitched. I've got a little bit of tent admin to do and then I'll bring you back. Kevin picked us up one of these cheap tables from um, AliExpress, they're about £16 once delivered. And you know, for the life of me, I can't remember how you set it up. Um, hold on, hold on. This is looking promising. I bet some of you will be shouting at the screens right now. You're doing it all wrong. <laughs> it's like one of these puzzles you used to get as a kid. Mensa test. This is embarrassing. <laughs> I don't know if I'll even show this. I'll bring you back once I suss it out. Put that in and then twist it. Boom, there we go. <laughs> one table done. Well folks, that was superb boss. I was having my dinner, I just happened to poke my head out of the tent and realised I was just about to miss the sunset. Straight out with the camera, and I've just watched it. Just dipped down, just west to Ben Nevis there. Good morning campers. Check this out by the way. Alrighty, breakfast is served, cup of porridge and some coffee to go. Wow, oh, look at this. A couple of wee speeders waiting to um, ambush my hand. Righty oh, it is quarter past six. That's me packed and ready to go. Let's do it. What a stunning morning this is turning out to be. I wonder how long it'll take this uh, cloud inversion to burn off. Straight ahead of me there is Ben Volick and Stuka Croin. Me and Kev were up that way last weekend to a wild camp. Right, I'm back down where I was yesterday, uh, just the low point. This is where I turn off and head towards the other Corbett now. So that's my Corbett there in the centre. It looks as though I'm going to disappear in the cloud and it'll pop up back above the cloud in about another hour or so. This route isn't the best by the way. I'll just show you. Basically you're following this little river 
down to about 600 metres and then you're going to then head up the hillside to grab the Corbett Well I must confess I got a little bit lost there in the myriad of peat hags and in the mist I somehow managed to do a, a 180 I was heading in the opposite direction I should be going in so uh, I looked at View Ranger, sorted out my, my route but I didn't want to believe View Ranger because I just felt I was going in the right direction so I got the compass out and no View Ranger is correct <laughs> so yeah back on track I think That's me out of the cloud. Cheeky Brock Inspector down there. Happy days. That squeaking noise isn't sweep from the sooty show. It's a golden plover. Oh, it is roasting now by the way. Just got over a hundred meters to go to the summit. All right, folks, that's uh, Ronnie Corbett, number two of the weekend, and number 140 for me. My back is like a fishmonger's window, so I'm going to dry off the t-shirt just now in the sun. I'm sorry, I'm going to strip down to the shorts and get rid of these tights because my legs are boiling <laughs> if I was to do this trip again I would actually camp here instead of over there because you'd get your tent pitched bang on the summit there and uh, I think the views are just marginally better Well, I've just wandered back into the mist, so it seems like a good time to wrap up this video. What I'll do is leave a couple other videos here that you might like to watch. Uh, if you haven't already, please do subscribe, otherwise I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!